There's a saying, what gets measured gets managed. And facilitators of teaching and learning have been looking for a way to authentically measure the growth of their students. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how I've been baking in this growth mindset into the daily tasks of my students and also share with you some of the values and metrics and the ways that I'm going about actually implementing those into the classroom using Adobe Spark. This is Dr. Ursula Franklin. If there was ever a growth process, if there ever was a holistic process, a process that cannot be divided into rigid predetermined steps, it is education. And so there's this genuine pursuit of how do we actually find a way to bring assessment into a growth mindset environment. And I think the best thing to do with that is to start with why, right? To think about what kind of values you want to be the foundation of your metrics and then how do you implement those metrics? How is it that we have the audacity to think that we know what our students are gonna need in five years, 10 years, and 15 years time. The truth is, we really have no idea what kind of challenges and opportunities and behaviors that are gonna be present for our students in that time. So it makes sense today to start thinking about what values we need as a bedrock to instill in our students so that they can be the kinds of citizens that the 21st century needs. I came across this idea of the four C's from the book 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by historian and futurist and philosopher Yuval Noah Harari. And those four C's are critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. These four C's have been expanded by the ISTE standards, and you can see those here, if you look closely, they're baked in and they're expanded in this. I think using these things as a metrics to start instilling values into our students is a really sustainable way forward for us. This way we don't need to necessarily try to predict what our students are going to need, but we can give them values such as integrity and curiosity and resilience and altruism. And those things sit as foundational to all societies. I use Adobe Spark as a day-to-day -day task in my classrooms. And it's a blog, right? And a lot of instructors have used blogs in the past. The other thing that we can do to start bringing a growth mindset is, is to frame the blog properly. And so this is what I share with my students at the very beginning of the semester. And that is, you know, this is a space for you to write out your process. You're not supposed to be perfect in this space you are going to gain a lot of insights from the failures that you have. So write about them. And not only will you gain insights, so will your peers. The creative process is a process of iteration. And while I have iteration baked into my actual course calendar, the idea of establish, grow, maintain, and repair, I also want them to be talking about that in their blog. The next thing that's very important for me is to share what my role is with the students. And the first thing that I say is, I'm here to facilitate your growth and to give you as many options in that growth as possible while also removing any perception of risk. So the four C's, critical thinking, collaboration, creativity, communication, they're a good start, but I add a fifth one, the idea of courage. So the first thing, this idea, the, the heart of everything, is creativity. And so creativity shows up in the Spark page over time because as students continue to iterate and interact with each other, these mixtures of techniques and ideas and concepts comes together. And I'm always encouraging my students to bend their ideas, to break apart their ideas, or to blend their ideas. This is all coming from Dr. David Eagleman's work, into something that iterates, into something that, that speaks to them, that's important for them. I'm not necessarily assessing the overall product, I'm assessing their process, 
and where does that creativity exist? The next is critical thinking, and critical thinking is exists exists within their uh, group to peer-to-peer uh, -peer communication, the way that they um, choose which tutorials to follow, they choose how to solve solutions, how to pivot from solutions, but it shows up where they write about how they've used the work and used the feedback and made decisions along the way in their blog. This is something that is a bit of a like buzzy word, right? Because for us, it means one thing. We know in the day-to-day -day world that we're going to be interacting with a team. But quite frequently in an academic environment, when you get put on a team, there's usually like one or two people who take the lead and then the rest can kind of just coast. So I try to shift that frame a little bit and do what I call collaborative learning, which is sharing techniques, um, giving, in, uh, like giving a, a space or a place to celebrate other people's work, giving empathy for the moment where somebody's struggling. Um, but really it's you know, being authentic about your words and your actions and, and like your work ethic. So it shows up in the Spark page well, when students are posting tutorials that they found helpful. Um, and also it improves communication because on another person's Spark page you might see them say, hey, I used this tutorial from Xavier and it was such a help, right? And that's where we start to bring up this collaborative learning. I will say that it is difficult to establish this culture because so often there's a culture of competition or there's this uh, kind of need to be perceived as perfect from our students. And that's really difficult to get them to get to a point where they can ask one another, their peers, questions and support and for feedback before they come to you. But the benefit of this is that it trains them to not think of you as the one-stop shop for everything, but to really learn how to cultivate their network and how to continue to establish that communication and collaborative mindset with other people. Communication shows up in their Spark page because it allows them the ability to deliberately practice what they did, how they did it, why they did it, what their obstacles were, and what their next steps are. Brene Brown who I adore, says that courage starts by showing up and letting ourselves be seen. Being vulnerable and being courageous, these are two sides of the same coin. And I think it's imperative for us as facilitators of teaching and learning to establish a classroom culture where someone can be their authentic self, where they can make a mistake in front of their peers and ask for help from their peers before coming to you. That's tricky. But as a facilitator, we need to bake that into the classroom culture. This is something I'm worried about. A lot of students come into my classroom and when I ask them, what do you love? Like, what gives you energy? They don't know. Some do and they're lucky and they're ready to just like hit the ground running. But often we find students that don't really know what their passive pleasures are or what their active enjoyment is and how to align those things into something that becomes, you know, a heuristic or an autotelic pursuit. Um, all of those things are the, are the home of intrinsic motivation. And I want to help students find those intrinsic motivations. So that becomes part of the thing that's baked into the blog as well. It's what do you love? Don't be bashful about it. Share. I'm proud of what happens in the students blogs when they use Adobe Spark. <clears throat> I asked my students to put the date and the time uh, that they were working and that they were active on this process for each of their blog posts. But other than that, I don't really give them a template necessarily to follow. They just know that they need to put about four hours in outside of the class on whatever projects that we are talking about that week. And so instead of specific assignments, I tend to give tasks that are challenges or exercise that will allow them to deliberately practice what they've been working on. And here's the last. Again, I have them do a, a deal where they tell me what they love so I can get to know who they are rather than treating them like a monocrop. I'm trying to ask them, what do you need and who are you? And then let's use that information to create something new. 
Forms. I use Microsoft Forms throughout the semester, and I'm asking them to evaluate their growth, um, to evaluate what they feel that they've learned and where they need to repair that learning relationship. So I'm really kind of putting it on their shoulders. Specifically, how did you collaborate? Tell me about critical thinking throughout the semester. Uh, where did you give feedback? Where did you get feedback? And it goes back to that thing that I started this whole entire talk with. What gets measured gets managed.